Hello and welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Gray and today I'm going to show you how to make this iCloud icon like the one you see on Apple's website right now with Adobe Illustrator. It's actually quite simple to do, so let's get started. First, take the ellipse tool and draw a perfect circle by holding down the shift key as you draw. Fill it with a simple black and white radial gradient. Now go up to Object, Expand, and choose Expand Object to Gradient Mesh. It doesn't look much different now when you do that, but next go to Object, Clipping Mask, Release. The next step, and this is an important one, is to ungroup everything. Now we can get rid of the clipping mask, and the easiest way to do that is to view it in outline mode. You'll find the clipping mask, it'll have a fill and stroke of none, and just go ahead and delete it. Next we'll add some new mesh lines, so take the mesh tool and click on the outside ring. Try to place the lines directly in between the two existing lines at the 45 degree mark. Add a couple more that are in between these, again trying to center the points halfway. Now we'll color each spoke, so take the direct selection tool, select these two points, and fill them with a light gray. Do the same with each set of points on each angled line, alternating medium and light grays. You can also use the lasso tool to select the points if you can't get them with the direct selection tool. Here's what I have so far. You can see I've added a couple extra mesh lines and colored those. The lines can get a little curvy, so here's how you fix that. Select a point and retract its handles as much as you can. Just move them as close to the point as possible. The handles can be a little squirrely, but if you get close, the lines will pretty much straighten out. Go around and do the same thing with any other curved lines. Now we're going to add the brushed metal effect. First, make another circle the same size as the first one. I can see in the control bar that my circle is 600 pixels, so I can click once on the artboard with the ellipse tool and enter 600 by 600. The new circle can be any color, by the way, and then just center it on top of the first circle. Now go up to the Effects menu, and before we apply any effects, you want to check your Document Raster Effects settings. Choose High, or Medium is probably OK, just not 72 ppi. Select the circle and go back to the Effects menu and choose Pixelate Mesotint. In this window, you get a preview of the different textures. We want some dots, either Medium or Grainy will do. Keep the circle selected and go up to the Effects menu one last time and choose Blur, Radial Blur. You don't get a live preview of this effect because it's pretty processor intensive, so you get a thumbnail representation instead. You want the spin method with the best quality, and the amount can be about 25 to 30. Now go make yourself a cup of tea or something because this can take two to three minutes. I've sped it up here, but when it's done you'll have a coarse radial texture. We want the shiny mesh to show through, of course, so reduce the opacity of the textured circle to about 25%. You might be better off typing in the number rather than using the slider in the transparency panel because you'll have to wait for the blur to redraw each time. Now we'll make a rounded square for the icon shape, so take the rounded rectangle tool and draw out a rounded square that fits just inside the circle. Then center it on the circle. We'll use this shape as a clipping mask as well as for the bevel of the icon, so drag a copy of it and put it aside for now. Select everything and go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Now take the copy that you made and make sure it has a stroke and no fill. Center it on the icon and then in the Stroke panel, give it a thicker stroke and align that stroke to the inside of the shape. Now go up to Object, Expand Appearance, which will turn the stroke into a compound path. Next, fill it with a linear gradient that goes from a light gray on the top to a darker one on the bottom. This will give the illusion of a light source above the icon. And since we have a light, we need a shadow, so I'm going to draw out a thin ellipse and fill it with a medium gray. Then I'll give it a Gaussian blur and then send it to the back. Now lock the layer and create a new one above it. I've already drawn out some simple shapes with which to make the cloud, and I'll just merge them in the Pathfinder panel. Give the stroke a dark gray color and increase its weight. Then go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. Now we're going to use the Appearance panel to apply some effects. 
First, click the Effects icon and go to Stylize Inner Glow. I'm using 100% black as my color, with the mode set to Multiply, and the glow coming from the edge. Give it a slight blur, and it'll start to look like the shape is recessed into the metal, and there's a small shadow. To create the beveled edge around the cloud, add a new fill in the Appearance panel. New fills are always placed above the existing one, so drag it down below. Now we're going to change this fill to a metallic gradient, and you can find some in the swatch libraries. Once you've changed the fill, you still can't see it because it's behind the dark gray one. So go to the Effects menu to Path, Offset Path. Turn on the Preview button and adjust the offset until it's just slightly outside of the original shape. Now you can use the Gradient tool to fine-tune the highlights on the bevel, and you're done. We can make a new graphic style and apply this effect to other shapes. Just click the new icon on the Graphic Styles panel, and now you can use any other shape and apply the style to it. Even if your new shape is a different color, all the appearance attributes of that style will be applied. Graphic styles are great because once you set up the initial style, you can apply it to a whole set of icons with the click of a button.